let's have a little bit of a heart-to-heart -heart about uh, making tutorials on YouTube. Short story, they aren't easy. Thanks very much, I've been Dave Connery. I'll see you next time. You know, for real. Yeah, I have tried and struggled with a t-shirt tutorial. Not that the design was a struggle. The design was easy. It's about trying to make a tutorial in a short enough time period that number one, teaches you what you need to know about me making that design, and number two, keeping it in a certain time stretch. I can't seem to make a tutorial any less than a ridiculous amount of time. So you're not getting a full design tutorial this time around, but what you will get are some tips and tricks that I found in Affinity Photo, and I'm gonna share those with you. Eh, let's go. What's going on everybody? My name is Dave Connery, and I'm an artist designer based in Southern California. I almost said Snartist and Snisniner. And I'm here today to talk to you about designing a t-shirt in Affinity Photo, except I'm not gonna actually design the t-shirt. I'm just gonna share with you the tips and tricks that I found while I was trying to design a t-shirt so that I could share that with you, but I wasn't able to do it in, t in a short enough time period, so now you get this. I wanna give a really huge shout out to all the designers that get up, up on this platform and share their design techniques for t-shirt design, uh, logo design, brochure design. They get it up here on this place and design that thing and do so within a 10 to 15 minute period. If you can get up here and create a tutorial that is intensive enough that people can follow along and create that thing themselves and do so in that short a time period, well then you're you're my hero because I have tried this numerous, numerous times. Olivia Sarkos, Charlie Pangas, Satori Graphics, uh, just to name a few, these guys do a tremendous job of teaching you how to do these things. And I just, I mean, I don't get me wrong, I love to teach. I just can't seem to do it in the time frame that they do it. While I'm trying to figure that out, let's talk about some other things that I learned along the way. What we have here going on on the screen, this is the design that I actually created that I was going to make to put it up into my Redbubble account. And I'm doing this because there's this trend of these kind of sunset lined graphics like this. It's almost ridiculous to me how many people are doing that whole sunset graphic thing. So I thought maybe if I created one that was using that same design trend, but doing so in a like a more interesting, more painterly way, then that would be cool. I made a whole tutorial about it that was two and a half hours long. Not even joking. Granted, there were probably some parts that I could have edited out. I probably would have been able to get it down to an hour and 45 minutes. Nobody here is gonna be watching that video. So I got rid of it. What I can take away from this are some things that I learned about the program while I was building it. The reason the tutorial was so long isn't just because I struggled with the design. Cause I didn't really struggle with the design. I, you know, sometimes I struggle with where things are located, how to make certain things happen. Cause in Photoshop, when I was using that on a regular basis, I knew all of that stuff all the time and things are just not in the same place. To kind of alleviate some of that pain for you guys, I'm gonna share with you some of the things that I've learned during this process. Tip number one, let's talk about selections. Here's what I did know about selections. When you are on a particular layer, and I'm gonna pick just this letter layer right here. If I wanted to, I could command and click that and it would make a selection around that. That's perfectly fine. That's an easy way to do it if you're jumping around from layer to layer to layer. Let's say I wanted to do it on the letters, but then go and do the trees next like this one here. I could absolutely 100% go to this one and then click it and then click that and then click it. That's, that's one way to do it. But there's also another way to do it just in case this is how you would rather operate. You're on your layer, doesn't matter which one. I'm gonna go to the background get out layer here and I'm gonna go Command Shift O and that selects that layer. So if I'm on a layer, Command Shift O selects that. If I'm on the tree layer, Command Shift O selects that. When you're using a mouse, using the option and click thing works fairly well, like I just showed you. But when you're using your tablet and the stylus, for some reason, it's a little trickier. I think it's just with the action of clicking the little button while you're trying to draw. and the, It's just a little trickier and it's not quite as efficient in the layer palette. What I prefer to do when I'm using this is I prefer to find my layer with the stylus and then hit the command shift Oh, again, that one is more about how you find yourself working more efficiently. If you feel like keyboard commands 
keyboard shortcuts are your thing, then that's probably gonna be better for you. Tip number two, let's talk about color picking. Now there's a few different ways that you can pick colors that you want to use, especially when you're doing some sort of painting like this where I was switching between the different colors like that. Sure, you can go whip it into your swatch palette and click that one and click that one and click that one and click that one and go to the brush tool and then go back and click and go back and click. But there are easier ways to do this. The next best way would be to use your key commands to switch between the brush tool and the color picker tool. B will get you onto the brush tool so I can paint and then I will get me so that I can pick a color. B gets me back to my brush and then I can paint in that new color. I gets me to the new color. Let's say I want to pull in this green or this um, pink. B gets me back here. But even that's not as efficient as you want to be. The easiest, most simple way to pick new colors while you are painting is to be on your brush tool and to hold the option key and click and hold and it will start to find that color. I'm just clicking and holding and then painting in whatever color seems to pop up while I'm doing this. Option, click hold until that magnifying glass shows up so you can fine tune which color you want to bring in. Tip number three, speaking of color, let's talk about color palettes. As you can see right here, I had a very specific color palette that I established for this design. I didn't come up with this color palette on my own though. In reality, what I did was I stole these colors from another photo. <laughs> Somebody took a photo, I took the colors out of that and used it as a palette. Now you might think that the best way to do that would be to import a photo and then start using the color picker to find the colors and do that and make them a palette. But I'm going to show you an even faster way to get that done. And you don't even have to import a photo to do it. You go here to your swatch palette, you go up to the little drop down hamburger thing, whatever they want to call that, and they go to create palette from image. I use this one from photographer Carlos Cervantes. I got that off of unsplash.com. As you can see, it is a really brilliant image of a sunset and I really like the colors that were here. The setting on here is standard at five, but as you can see, these five colors are not capturing all the colors that I want. So I wanna bring this slider up and I believe I put this at 30 when I did it. Hit that preview button and it'll show you all the colors that got brought in. And then once I hit create, that's going to create a new palette just like you see here. Now it actually brought in more color, so maybe I had the choices down to like 20, 24, something like that. And you can go all the way up to 256 colors. The problem with that is that then you're getting into these like slight variations on hue. You'll have like 40 different versions of pink and you don't need that. I, in fact, there's more here than I needed, but if I went too low, then sometimes these other colors like that green won't come in. It's kind of subtle on that one image and so I wanna make sure that I get that color. So I go up a little bit more and then some of these other colors just kind of get left behind because I don't need them. Tip number four isn't just about Affinity Photo. It can be used in Photoshop or it can be used in other editing programs like that. It's more of a design process idea than it is anything else, but it's something I did discover while making this particular design. As you can see, when I take the background away, it is transparent. And that's because I did a lot of masking before I created this one layer. But the way I did it when I first started this was that I would make the element, like say the global sunset, and then I would mask the layer. Then I would go make the tree, and I would mask the tree, and make the second tree, and then mask the tree, and then make the letters, and then mask the letters. That process took longer than I think it should have especially in terms of making the tutorial. If I'm gonna make this tutorial again, what I would do instead next time, I would create all of these elements individually. I would create the sunset globe, I would create the two different trees, I would create the letters, and then I would go and I would place the mask on top of the globe as needed. How do I do that? Simple, I create the globe image, I put a mask on top of that, and then with a black brush, as you can see, it's very painterly, and you could do this any style you want. Just to show you what I'm talking about, I'm putting a mask here. I would go and paint on that mask layer. I'm only masking the globe layer, and I'm painting on that globe layer mask. Now there's only two exceptions why I would mask anywhere else, and it has to do with these trees. This half tone is different than this half tone. So I had to mask these individual trees because the halftone shows up in different places. The only other time besides that was I had to mask this tree out of this tree so that it appeared to be in front of it. At the end of the day, there's only three masks and that's everything you got masked on the globe layer, the halftone mask on this tree, and then the halftone mask on this tree plus the mask out of the front tree. The biggest issue was that I built this once and then I had to go back and think about, okay, well, if I'm going to ever do this style again, 
how would I make that more efficient next time? That was a learning point for me, and now it's a learning point for you. Unless, of course, you already knew it, and I'm just the slow one. Now, tip number five is more of a philosophical way about working within the app, and it's very simple. If you're going to be good at anything, you need to become a student of the game. If you want to learn how to use Affinity Photo better, you need to become a student of Affinity Photo. What I mean by that is simple. Study everything you possibly can. Go into your tool palette and really figure out how all of these tools are working. Go to the menu and go through each particular item and figure out what will this command do. If I click this thing, what's it gonna do for me? Go through the edit, the text, the document, the layer, select, the range. Go through all of these so that you understand where things are. Go through all of them so that you understand what the tools do. Sometimes the tools that you see here may be similar to what you would find in Photoshop, but they're called something different and you want to be able to figure out what that is. Study them, use them, be aware of where they are located. Take notes. Figure out how you apply that tool to your work. Figure out how you're working before and how maybe some of these tools will help you work faster and more efficiently. Experiment, play, learn, grow. Do all of these things within the app. Spend the time. Now, of course, if you're like me, there will be points of frustration where you're trying to figure out like, well, how do I do this very specific thing? And you may not be able to find that just by going through the help or going through the menus like that. You may actually have to go find a video for that, which uh, has been beneficial to me. I've gone onto YouTube more times than I can count to find information about this particular app. That whole color palette thing, I found that in a YouTube video, but really, you should be digging deep into the app so that you understand what everything does. That's the best advice I can give you. You wanna become really good at Affinity Photo? You want to transition from Photoshop over to Affinity Photo? Become a student of the game. And that's pretty much all I have for you this time because, uh, well, you know, you already know why. <laughs> But I hope those tips were helpful to you, and I hope that it makes your work within Affinity Photo a little bit easier, a little bit better. And while you're doing that stuff, you're doing your homework, you're being a student of the game, I'm gonna go be a student of the game in the other way. I'm gonna go look at some of these other guys and their videos about how they do tutorials and try to figure out how to brainstorm this one. Like, how would I have done this faster? Because I promise you guys, I'm not gonna be putting out an hour and 45 minute tutorial video unless, you know, somebody is that much of a glutton for punishment. You want the hour and 45 minute tutorial video? Give me a comment below and I will I'll try to oblige you next time. While you're headed down there, make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done so already. Hit the bell button because you never want to miss a thing. And share this truncated video with all of your homies. That's it for me this time, folks. I've been Dave Connery. You've been awesome. I hope you have a great week and I'll see you on Friday. Remember, be good today, be even better tomorrow. See you.